This conference will now be recorded. Yep. Uh, okay. Thanks again for joining our session. So this is again Arvind. So I'll be uh, working around with you for the mobile automation training. So just a recap, like say yesterday what we saw. Uh, let me share my screen again. Yeah. So yesterday we saw about the installation of your Node.js, your Android Studio. And uh, uh, okay, so let me list it down here. Just a minute. So yesterday we saw about how to install your installation. of Android Studio and uh, how to create a simulator and uh, how to check the simulator name in ADB command we saw it up so and also we saw about the node.js installation So these things we have seen about. Okay. So today we'll be seeing about like say let me keep that as a day one actually. And for day two today let's let's keep it something like say uh let's have it something called today we'll be seeing about installation installation of xcode and how to create a simulator via xcode and then how to check the name how to check the simulator in xc run command okay so we'll start up with these things and let's see how much we can cover okay so first things first today uh if uh, like the uh, since we are also seeing the ios part of it like uh, the xcode can be run only inside your mac machine okay so if you try to install it in windows so obviously it will not work so don't try it up if you are having a windows machine so it needs a proper mac machine so that it can work it out <laughs> So usually uh, how it will be installed is like say in every Mac machine there will be an app uh, app store available. So you need to click on the app store. So over here you need to search for. So this is also similar to that of Play Store. Here you need to search something called your Xcode. So I have already installed my Xcode actually so that's why it is showing open if not it will be something like a get available so i need to install it up. so that is the first thing okay so once you installed your xcode the next thing is like try to open it for first time and then do the configuration simple as it is it will be a normal configuration only nothing much actually you need to click install and then next 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 and that's it uh, okay so it's asking for this okay just give it install that's it so it is now trying to install it up that's it so very simple configuration over here So 
so let it start okay click on continue so let's create a test project over here so already i have a test project in my desktop so let me open it if not just create a new project and that's it simple as it is so what uh, i did now create a new project so what i'm going to develop it like it's just going to be an ios and an app a simple app just to open your simulator and check it up that's why like make it as simple as possible and click on next give a project name test demo project and what is the interface what is the storage just leave it as it is click on next and then just give a create that's it a project a simple project would be created for you that's all we require it okay now what we need to do it is like say so once this project has been created now uh, we can start your simulators how to start your simulator is like say so we can go to file Just a minute. Where's the devices? Give me a minute, just a minute. I have back throat. Yeah, so this is how we can do it up. So from your uh, options over here, Windows, Device and Simulators. So let's add our simulator name over here. Test Simulator and Device Type. So whichever the device you require, you can give it up. So maybe I'll give it 13. Yeah, anything is fine actually over here. So let's give it 14. And OS version. Okay, so let it be like this. And then create. Uh, okay. We need an iOS 17 actually. Just a minute. get it up uh, it is installing me only so just give it a minute I think it should be working Meanwhile, when it installs, like what it is trying to install is like say how for your Android we have the OS version 13, 12, etc. Right? The same way iOS has also an OS version for every eight devices for a mobile, for a uh, iPad, or for the Mac. We have all these things available. So it is trying to install that particular OS version over here. So let me quickly check it up whether it is installed. So still it's downloading only. 
so let's try to create a simulator and check whether no it's possible it's trying to install it few more minutes I think it should be up and running <laughs> okay but before that let's see like what are the commands that will be available actually so how we have the ADB commands right ADB uh, Android debug uh, bridge commands we have it right similarly in your iOS also we have certain commands available which we call it as a XC run commands actually so maybe I list down few of the commands like say okay so already it's available these commands so okay so you have like XC run simulator list so so this will run uh, uh, this will list out all the simulators available so this is the equivalent command of that of your adb devices so how many uh, devices that you are connected to it so everything it will be listing out to us okay yeah so it's almost done i think so let's wait for a couple of minutes as well and then let's try to uh, create it and run this particular command to check it out so xc run is the command name and sim ctl is nothing but it's a tool for interacting with your iOS simulator okay so that means like how a ui automator is available inside your android studio similarly we have sim uh, ctl available for interaction okay so that is the relationship between your android and your ios so android would have a ui automator in order to in, uh, uh, interact with your devices but uh, over here it's going to be sim ct and over that adb commands would be that the xc run commands are uh, available So let's wait for so that let it install and we can quickly try to create a, a device name so that's our main goal for this topic okay so did you try to create your Android devices by any chance simulators So now it's available. So no problem. Let me retry it up over here. Ah, okay, so already we have a list of simulators available. So if I click it over here, so <coughs> the list of simulators came over here actually. So here, as you can see, it I'm not able to zoom, but if you see it, there is an identifier available so let's use the same thing over here 
so if these devices are not sufficient just try to click over here and uh, create your own simulator as well now you can see the ios version is available okay so like this whichever the ios version you require you can install it up and check it okay and you can do a create and you can see the ios devices available okay and just a minute why it's not working just let me restart it again okay so that is some problem i think okay what happened just a moment Just a minute. simulators okay so. okay simulator started so as you can see my simulator is getting started over here Again, if I want to check the list of devices available, so yesterday we checked the Android device. So if you want to check the iOS device, what is running, as I told you, so this is the command XC and run is similar to that of ADB. And SMCI TL is nothing but similar to that of UI Automator. So, and then copy paste the list. So it's going to give you the list of simulators that is being connected so you can see all the simulators which is available for this particular device is available it will be listed down but you can see uh, you can observe it over here so everything has been shut down and stuff actually over here so just search for iphone 15 pro max So 15 Pro Max is available. The list of devices, you can see it, the run times. So from here, yeah, you can now see the difference, right? So other things are shutting down, but this has been booted. So that means like say it is just started to work actually. It takes a little bit time, but it will work. So let's give it some time. So this will be the UDID of the device. Okay, simple as it is. So this is what we require it since we saw in the 
day zero right day zero session so the what are the things that we require to automate it up so this is one of the items that we require it up so which is nothing but your UDI ID. yeah so as you can see it has been started so let's try to list out the command again and check it out yeah so again the same state is booted and it is running so so far no issues when we try to start it up okay so any doubt here so far till now so how to start your device in your uh, from your Xcode so there are a couple of commands as well for your XC test so to create a simulator from terminal also it is possible but you need to follow these commands actually create uh, uh, X run create and then example simulator and then you need to provide what type of device what is the iOS version simple as it is and to launch the created simulator like how we have launched it now right so if you want to launch this device so you need to provide the UDID of it so where do I get the UDID so this is the UDID the identifier of your simulator okay identifier of the uh, Pro Max is a different one so this is the for your Pro Max so if you want to boot this simulator then we need to give this particular command okay so if you want to check like say which device has been booted so this is the command so far like all the devices has not been booted up right everything is shut down so if you want to get the list of devices that has been booted you can give it dev devices xc run sim ctl lists devices which are booted so that is the meaning of this command you can see it this is the command and what is the UDID or the device identifier basically uh, sorry not this one where was it already there launched so windows device simulators you can see it over here 15 pro whatever was available over here the same name would be available uh, inside this list as well okay so this is how it works so any doubt till here so far like how to launch and how to identify the UDID of the device Ah, okay sorry I missed it so Shubham has asked something like say 8 GB RAM laptop for APM will it work yeah I think should be sufficient actually uh, but make sure you open like say uh, uh, once you open it like say sometimes it might go down slow a bit So make sure the other programs are closed. That's one main thing. Yeah, should be sufficient actually. Yeah, but uh, maybe you may experience a little slowness when you launch your uh, simulators actually. So if you have a 8 GB, so try to connect your own device. So I think it should work so 8 gb ram laptop in the sense i assume it's a windows laptop yeah so that is totally fine but uh, uh, if you want to use a simulator just try <coughs> i would suggest like say if i have a 8 gb ram 
so i would suggest you to go with a real time device so just have your own device and connect it through usb cable and i think should be fine yeah for android it will work na yeah, yeah it will work it should work it should work yeah but it you may experience a little slowness that's the only thing So any doubts? Sir, I downloaded. Sir, I downloaded all the things, and it is my first session. Then, uh, how can I set up the Android means uh, emulator? Uh, Android emulator. Hmm? Uh, okay. So Android is quite easy. So uh, you want to create an Android simulator? That means, if I understand it correctly. Yeah. 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 So if you see my machine, so I have my Android Studio started. <coughs> so once you start your Android Studio, similar, <coughs> sorry, similar to what we did in our Xcode, right? In Android Studio, also yeah. first you will create your own project. Okay, like say this this uh, project I've already created it, but similar to you, <coughs> you will have your first project created. Just go with a simple project because just we need only the <coughs> device manager. So over here, like say, uh, once you launch it, if you don't find the device manager over here, where my mouse is pointing towards it, so if it is not available here, no problem. Go to your Windows, uh, and there will be something. Sorry. Then go over here. So view more, move to. Oh, see. Where was it? So usually it lists down all the uh, windows that we need to open it up. But I'm not sure why it's not coming now. But let me retry it up. So other option? No. Should be the windows only. So it's not showing it up. So it should show device and manager. So why it's not showing? Just add. Okay, let me check that option actually, but. It should be under your Windows, uh, how you usually see it in your IntelliJ. So that's how it should be available. So it should list down all the window options available over here, but it's not doing it. So if, okay, so I'll tell you the option maybe later in the end of the session. So where you can find it. So usually you can find it over here, device and managers. So, and you can do a create device and you can select which phone you want to use it up like say what is the simulator you want to use it up so you can go with 6 pro or something <coughs> click next so similarly how in xcode we downloaded the 17 version right the ios 17 version similarly here also each android would have a version so you need, you, you can download it <coughs> over here like say there is a download option over here you can download it so i just use the 13 version so because uh, it will lock away a lot of space in your device as well that means your laptop or your desktop so make sure you have one version at a time so if you have if you try to download all the versions there's chances like your laptop might be running out of space so make sure like you have one version at a time and then you go ahead with that if not your laptop will be super slow 
so that's why I downloaded only the 13 version so I didn't download much actually so even uh, 12L I downloaded it up but I, I think I deleted it but still it's showing up <coughs> okay so I'll go with the 13 so I'll click on next one and over here you can expand the devices virtual memories and virtual storage available inside the device over here so you can see the internal storage from mb check it out to the gb so go with again the minimum one i would say why because like again it is going to occupy some space inside your laptop or your desktop so that's the reason okay and then if you do a finish that's it your device has been created so to launch it up just play this command click this play command waits for a couple of minutes so obviously it will be started so as you can see when starting it will be only 513 mb but once your device has been started so it will shoot up to 8 gb or something 8 or 10 gb so when you add some applications to the device also it will be counted over here so that's the reason i told you like maintain a minimal version one version at a time okay so both android and ios are similar in behavior actually that means similar in this ex in the simulator behavior so make sure you have the required setup and that should be fine so don't make your laptop too slow so it will be then really tough to work with that laptop yeah so is it clear maybe how to start it up So, sir, it is already opening my window. So, I already downloaded download it by myself. Ah, okay, okay, that's great. Then, yeah. yeah. And the Pixel 3A EP at extension level is there. Ah, okay. Then it's good. Yeah. yeah, and all all the things are downloaded, uh, no tears and all that. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's great. Then. So that means we are fine with the download stuffs actually. So this is how we download your uh, things and check the devices inside your laptop or your desktop. So this is how it works. Okay. So so this is one part of your. installation procedures actually so again we try to install the xcode as well so now we'll proceed a little bit towards your java part of it okay so may i know like say is java required for everyone or just how is it because it's again a prerequisite actually to know the java so we'll have some heads up basic uh, concepts actually so from our group like say uh, is everyone is good at java or like say how is it so anyhow that we are not going to teach selenium so but just the java programming basics we'll be touch basing it so just to understand like say whether everyone is okay with java or you want to skip the topic and move ahead like how is it because certain batches they may skip the topic at some point but uh, it's up to you actually so that's the reason i'm asking it about because the batch sometimes would be a mixed batch so that's the reason Yeah, I think there is no way to learn Java. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? There is no need to learn Java, sir. If the person have the same name knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same thing. Because uh, I'm not sure how the group is about. I think yesterday there was a manual tester, so he wanted a Java session, but uh, I don't know like whether today is available or not. 
so that's the reason I'm checking it out actually okay so uh, Patil I'm not sure whether it is Patil or not uh, so that's why I wanted to check actually so whether it is uh, if you require really require it we can go through the concepts of java if not we can skip it and uh... yeah uh, for me uh, java is not i am good with java. java okay fine then yeah yeah so then uh, maybe let's skip it up i would say like say let's start with the installation stuffs for apm so so far we have seen only like uh, yeah Shubham. how about suchi yeah suchi is available so maybe just can you ping it up like would you require java or not so it will be really helpful yeah, yeah definitely like uh, i mentioned yesterday i know a little bit about um, java basics like you don't have to start from like the a plus b and all of that but then like touch base on okay. it if you can oh okay 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 fine okay. sir uh, you can uh, hello sir you can yeah, explain yeah. little bit means uh, if you got the part like a uh, collection and all that that time you uh, you explain sir. yeah fine yeah then we'll uh, start with the basics and then we'll move ahead maybe uh, one or two sessions maybe i think that should be fine i think so maybe let's start it up so uh, to start the Java part, like say, first thing is like say, uh, we need to have the JDK installed in our machine. So install the JDK. Basically, just go to Google.com and then there is like say JDK download. <coughs> so there is a JDK 21 version available. So I would recommend like say go anything less than 21. So even if it is the latest one, so maybe there might be compatibility issues actually. So just go with the jdk 17 okay so this is again the installation part of it so if it's going to be a mac i would uh, just <coughs> sorry just download this one and then run it up so if it's going to be again a windows the same process so just download your exe file and run it up and uh, i hope you have an understanding of how to set the environment variables so in mac basically we don't require the environment variables to be set because once you run it in the machine it automatically picks it up but inside your windows you need to go to your system variable if you have access okay so let me show the option over here The images so I hope this image is clear okay so you have a user defined variable and you have a system at variable so if you have an access to your system variable just set it as Java home simple as it is so if you don't have the access towards your system variable maybe if you use your office laptops or something so i don't think so you have your access then go for the user variable set the same java home and again over here there will be a path variable available just click on edit as you can see it over here and add the java bin version like bin till the bin path okay so then only you will be getting your java version so once i go to the terminal over here so just you can give java space double hyphen version so i am using a jdk 17 so so far no issues for me till now so the same version you can use it as well okay so this is how it works okay first the jdk then actually which uh, uh, tool that you are going to automate maybe it can be uh, sorry not the tool 
from which tool you are going to write your scripting it can be your IntelliJ it can be your Eclipse so it doesn't matter so both is the same so I usually use uh, Eclipse actually so it is good enough for me for the development perspective but if you want to use your IntelliJ so so that is also fine but for your IntelliJ you have two versions available so one is your community version and another one is your uh, ultimate edition actually so go ultimate edition is payable after 30 days so i would recommend to go with the community edition so it is also similar in nature so nothing much new towards it actually so let me really quickly go with the intellij So this is how you install it up over here. So let me close the simulators actually because sometimes it might result in little slowness. Just a drag and drop in Mac. I think it should be fine over here. Yeah. So let me open my IntelliJ Community Edition. So let me create it as a new project. So IntelliJ is good enough. So it's going to be a Java project and IntelliJ. So over here, like say, start a more. And I think should be fine. And then you can create it. So now you have a project with you. Simple as it is. So you have your source, you have your main, uh, main method so it automatically creates that's really good okay so everything is available for you over here so if it's going to be an eclipse it's a different setup altogether so you, you need to create all these things uh, by yourself so it doesn't come on your own but that's the why like I give preference to IntelliJ actually so it automatically creates and give it to you so let's delete all these things actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. So here always uh, Java class will have a main class actually and then we have the main method available. So as you know, like say these are few of the keywords like public static void and stuff. So public is an access modifier. So when we have the access modifier, it can be segregated into three things public private and protected So each has its own limitations like what it can be dealt or how far from where it can be accessed So public means it can be accessed from anywhere private means within the class level and protected means again It's a class level, but with the help of inheritance it can access it can be accessed anywhere and Static means it's a, again a keyword in uh, Java so where a static can access only another static and uh, it cannot access a non-static variable uh, like say for example int of a is equal to 10 if i give it up so this is how i declare a variable the same thing over here So if I try to access that particular variable which is available, so it will throw me an error over here. 
So let's see the error. So non-static field A cannot be referenced from a static context. So that is a problem. So but if I make it as a static, so obviously I'll be able to access it up. So this is the core concept of your static. Okay, so when you run this one out, you get your output simple as it is. So this is how it works. <coughs> okay. And the same thing goes with your uh, methods as well. So methods again, you need to have it as a public void. So void is nothing but if your method should have a return type, the void can be replaced the type of return type it needs to mention. So maybe it can be a string integer or so and so. And then you can have the name of the method. Maybe let me have it something like say a simple one addition over here open close bracket and then I can do some operations do some operations over here so methods can be of two types it can be like say with parameter and without parameter if it is going to be like say without parameter Just a minute. If it is going to be like without a parameter, so this is how it looks like. If it's going to be with parameter, so just you can give the variable type and uh, the parameter, like say int of b, and then you can do your operation. Simple as it is, like say top result which is equal to a plus b simple as it is you can have it up then uh, and i can have it as a result over here so if I want to call this over here, as I told you, like main method is a static method, but over here it's non-static. So obviously we touch base the object, object, how to create an object. So here the object, how can we create it? It's like the main method. So that's the class name over here. So main, and then I create an object equal to new reference class. So here the reference class is going to be same as that of your base class and I give like say main dot and then I invoke the addition methods so on comma two so this is how it works okay so when you run your script you get your output three okay so this is all about your object creation so your object creation can be done from anywhere in the class okay so whichever class you want to use it up you can create an object so there won't be any issues actually so till that one okay and uh, this is about a few concepts about your uh, uh, what uh, uh, static variable and how to create an objects okay so static uh, definition what it can access it up and this is again for your object creation okay so this is about it so any doubts here so far till now <coughs> okay so i hope no doubts over here till now so let's continue a bit on java so let's go to the uh, oops concept of it so or let me check it if i'm missing something so are you guys like aware, uh, aware of about the string functions and stuff so or you want to go deep dive into it like how a string can work and uh, what are the options available okay Shubham. yes okay <coughs> so okay fine then so the string options would be like say so we have different uh, parameters available or variables available like say in string and stuff available so let me create a new project altogether oh, okay or oh, let me ha have a 
predefined one which I have it up. So let me switch the project. Just give me a moment. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, means uh, um, I installed the EPM from my friend uh, with the help of my friend's help, but uh, uh -huh. the the device uh, the device I joined there by my by my mobile means I connected to my uh, cable, mm -hmm. and uh, then sir, uh, how can we convert means uh, create the simulator? Uh, you can uh, send that notes to me, yes, sir. Uh, sorry if I understand the issue properly. You connected a real device to your machine, correct? Right? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, that time I connected to real device, but I want to go by a simulator. So, uh, yeah. uh, simulator Next session no you problem. will explain. Uh, uh, you you want to run anything on your simulator? That means no, sir. Means uh, if we go for uh, next level now, means for the starting phase of the APM tool, then that time it will help now. How to run the things? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are not yet in actually. So, so far, like say, we just created a, we just uh, showed, like say, how to create a simulator from Android Studio, how to list okay. it in the ADB devices, like say, uh, okay. uh, when we go to the terminal or your command prompt, so when we give ADB devices, right? So, mm -hmm. it will list out all the devices that is attached to your laptop, so whether it's going to be an emulator or simulator or real device okay. anything it can be that okay. so it will be listed over here so till that level only we have seen so we have a lot of adb commands so maybe in the okay. tomorrow session we'll be again checking it out okay sir my my question is that means you, you will help me uh, you will help now sir to how to yeah. set up the yes, simulator, yes. simulator and all that yeah. yes yes that yes, is not yes. definitely okay. yeah definitely yes, okay. yes. Okay, thank you sir. Uh, we, we have uh, started the simulator over here so okay. that is how usually we do it up we go to android studio and uh, give the simulator but okay. uh, apart from that any doubts you have on that like say so that is the setup no part. sir no sir no i want only to to do a setup for the to run the programs and all that ah yeah uh, till the till the setup part only we have seen programs part like say we'll move it to tomorrow yeah so okay. we'll just try to identify the activity so first we'll go with the android and then we'll move on to the ios so okay. first we'll try means, to uh, you are giving means you are giving only overview how we can do it yes 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 okay. yeah okay. yeah Thanks. so like uh, you can also do the same thing from your machine actually so so far like we have seen the command to just identify the simulator but uh, tomorrow's session we'll be checking like say how to uh, get the app activity name and package name and how to use it inside your script so that level tomorrow we'll be checking it up so okay. we need to do the apm installation as well so that will follow tomorrow's session yeah okay, okay. yeah and tomorrow uh, you will get a complete picture like how to uh, invoke uh, app from your device yeah So maybe I think today time is that's it maybe yeah so today we'll need to stop over here pause for today so tomorrow we'll start sir. again yeah sorry yes please sir what is your name sir uh, Aravind Aravind okay sir yeah thank you sir. yeah thank you so today we'll pause it over here so that uh, tomorrow again uh, the again we'll start with the APM so tomorrow we are going to deal with the concept like APM installation so what we need to install it for APM 2.x and then okay. we'll be seeing like say how to identify the app package name from your application okay so there is an application available in your mobile device okay. where you can identify it if not through uh, through the uh, ADB commands, how to identify? I'll tell it to you. Okay. Sir. So okay. that will be like a starter part actually for all the APM stuffs. Okay. So so far, what we have seen is like we just 
have the initial setup for your simulator your android studio and stuff so tomorrow yeah. will be the real thing actually so what we are going to do and uh, sir one question is there sir uh, there are uh, openings for epm now means in market there are like as well there are more openings on epm now i yeah yeah actually the openings for apm wavers a bit actually but uh, there is always a consistent opening available yeah because uh, sir i i already work in uh, the last organization in bangalore uh-huh. and uh, due to and due to layoffs i resigned from the company and i am looking for job change but i am not getting the calls that's that is the issue for me that's why i am doing the new technology ah uh, okay no, no problem actually yeah. layoffs is quite often nowadays so it's not a big deal actually yeah, yeah. if you are in a startup or in a well established company the layoffs is like a very natural thing nowadays so it's and interview and interviews are also a top sir and like nowadays uh, sorry, i gave some interview sir? Uh, interviews are so top now i gave uh, uh, this uh, yeah. Intel level is yeah it means uh, is a difficult now. Yeah, may know like say uh, your automation or manual resource or something. No sir, it means I did a course uh, from last year and joined the company in Bangalore, and basically okay. from Maharashtra. And uh-huh. after that one year uh, there is no project. They said you have to go from here suddenly, and uh, after that there is no call for for three month. Yeah. and i i put it the 3 years experience that time and now i put it the 4 year but after putting the 4 year i am getting the calls mm-hmm. but the interview is very tough sir ah yeah, yeah. means uh, oh, yeah. means uh, means if they are giving a special character they are uh, they are asking the program like to remove special characters from string then we will use the direct replace all method but they are asking like uh, you have any another logic after ah, writing okay. the correct program After yeah, writing correct program, also they are asking. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they are expecting something like uh, uh, user rejects to remove it and then something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they are asking like, uh, you uh, can you do by using the another uh, logic? Means I use the logic like a regular expression by using replace all method, but they are asking like, uh, can you have the another logic? Then person mm-hmm. at a time can't uh, solve that program, no sir. Yeah, yeah. So nowadays interviews are like that. So they expect yeah. multiple options. Yeah. Okay. Then, Thank uh, you. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow we'll see the Java part, few of the string parts, and how to uh, uh, check the activity name of the Android devices. We'll check it up. So from then okay, we'll sir. check it up. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.